situations. So I, I want to correct that misinformation today just because you're having obstacles and situations and the adversary is coming after you does not mean that God is not with you. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. See, the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, are you there? Check and make sure your neighbor got there. The Apostle Paul said, for a what kind of door? What kind of door? Great door. And here the word is referring to door of opportunity. Paul said, a great door, an effectual door is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. So here Paul is testifying to the fact that God opened this great door for him, this great door of opportunity. Paul said, God opened it for me, and the door was effective. That word effectual means effective. So God, Paul is saying, this door was effective. I'm able to impact people's lives. But he said, guess what? Behind that door were adversaries, many adversaries, many challenges, many opposition, much opposition. So understand that there will be doors that God will open for you. Doors that he will open wide for you. Great doors God will open for you. Already knowing that behind door number two is going to be opposition, will be stumbling blocks, will be roadblocks, will be things or, or, or your adversary to turn you around to make you say, well, just forget it. That's not God. See, that's the devil's job, mother. His job is to get you to turn back and to turn away from where God is trying to send you to. If God opens a door, you can know that the enemy is going to be standing right there presenting stumbling blocks, situations, problems, all kind of demonic spirits to make you turn back. However, here's the thing. Stumbling blocks and obstacles have never intimidated God. Stumbling blocks have never caused God to turn back from the promises that he has laid out in his word. And God wants his people. God wants you. God wants you, Pastor. God wants me. God wants you to grow to the place that we don't allow stumbling blocks, adversaries, situations, obstacles to turn us away either. Nor are these stumbling blocks and obstacles to keep you from accomplishing what God has ordained for you to accomplish in the earth realm. See, there are purposes and there are assignments right now that are not being fulfilled because somebody has allowed a stumbling block to trip them up. You know, I'll tell you, as God began to minister to me concerning this word this week, I got a new energy. <clears throat> I got a new fight on the inside of me. Because sometimes you can go through and you can have challenges in your life. And see, this is what you've got to keep in mind. Every challenge that the enemy is sending your way ultimately is to make you give up. It's to make you question what God said. It's to test your righteous resolve. So that you walk away and say, well, you know, uh, maybe God is not really in this. Maybe not God is who I thought he was. There are more Christians right now who are questioning whether or not God is who he said he is. Because of obstacles. Because something happened. Because the enemy put something in front of you to push you back, a wall to trip you up. But here's the thing, you've got to know that just beyond that wall, just beyond that opposition, is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. The
the opportunity of a lifetime. That's why the enemy is fighting and pressing. And every time you conquer one demon, he sends another one. But just beyond that wall is an opportunity of a lifetime, an opportunity for you to impact somebody's life, for you to impact life, that person that's sitting next to you, to impact the church in a way that really does matter. And if you don't get that, you'll find yourself being tripped up, falling down, giving up, turning away, saying, I can't make it. I can't do this. This is too hard. God, if you're really God, then I wouldn't be going through this. And God is saying the reason that you're going through and haven't given up is because I'm God. I'm the one who carried you when you were about to fall down. I picked you up. That's why you're sitting in church today, because I am who I say I am. That's why you have life and breath, because I am God. Oh, don't you dare let that stumbling block trip you up and make you want to give up and turn back. No, what are you going to do? You're going to gird up your loins with strength and say, I will go on. I will persevere. I will come out. It ain't nothing but trouble. It ain't nothing but a stumbling block. It ain't nothing but that same little demon that you chased off the last time. He back again. He just come in a different way. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he, he, see, he knows. He says, okay, well, that last way didn't work, so I'm going to try this way this time. Ain't nothing but that same little coward demon. Amen. When I was down on my knees praying this week, because this week was very challenging for me, sometimes I say that and people say, well, you didn't act like it. Oh, no. I told Dr. Gwen one day, I said, you know, I said, I'm just like, you know, other folks, some, some weeks you feel like, you know, you got uh, certain disorders. I don't want to offend anybody. But you know, one minute you're, you know, you're raising up your hand. You say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The next minute you're going, oh, Lord, <laughs> you know, am I going to make it through this? Amen. But this week when I was praying, see, I know how to pray, and I know how to get what I want from God. I know how to get up and go get in the spirit realm and not leave until I get an answer. And so this week I was on my knees and I was praying and I was crying out to God. And you know what? You know, sometimes your words don't do what you need them to do. And so I began to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I began to just sense demon spirits back up, little coward demons running, running. And, and all of a sudden I had a, a, a vision in my mind that these demons ain't nothing but cowards trying to blow you and if you let them bluff you they'll keep on bluff you bluffing you but if you make up your mind and rise up and get in faith and begin to speak to them and say you get your little coward <laughs> self out of my house they will flee amen amen I got rid of some demons this week so it's well with my soul I feel like preaching today I'm so glad I can finally preach. I had to stop and get y'all talking right, so I had to teach. But today I want to preach, teach. Is that all right? Amen. I want you to go with me to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7. The book of 2 Kings and chapter 7. 2 Kings, chapter 7. And I want to show you how four lepers impacted a whole city because they dared press past the obstacles in their life and get a word from God for lepers. And so in the book of 2 Kings, I'm going to let you get there. Amen. Chapter 7, while you're turning there, there was a famine in the land. And so Elijah prophesied, and Elijah said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. This scripture ministers to me because it says to me that you can be in famine one day, 
You can be broke one day, not know how you're going to pay your rent, not knowing how you're going to be fed, how God